what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, Block Z. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a series of news headlines detailing the epidemic of an unknown virus in the Philippines. Meanwhile, Mario shuts off the radio after hearing the report on the epidemic. He is driving his daughter, PJ, a senior medical student at San Lazaro University, to campus for her first day of classes. Afterward, Mario discusses the epidemic with his daughter and asks if she has been vaccinated, but PJ brushes him off. Mario had a strained relationship with PJ since her mother's death. PJ holds him responsible for not being with them in the Philippines when her mother suffered a fatal stroke. The fact that she failed to save her mother also traumatized PJ. When PJ ignores his question, Mario changes the topic and apologizes for not being with them before her mother dies. Mario reasons that he wanted to go home before, but being an overseas Filipino worker was hard to request leave from work. However, PG is still not convinced by his excuse. PG ends their discussion by reminding her father to pay for her overdue tuition payment. Afterward, PG gets out of the car and decides to walk to school instead because of traffic. Just then, PG arrives at San Lazaro University. She attends the class with her longtime friends and classmates from Block Z, medical students Erica and Miles, and the basketball team captain, Lucas, who harbors hormone feelings for PJ. Erica discusses the impact of the virus on junior students, which attacks and kills its victims by destroying their brains. Then she inquires a junior student about how to avoid dying, but he is at a loss for words. Consequently, PGA provides an alternative response by stating that the only way to escape death is to develop immunity to it. PG elaborates that there may be mutations that render certain people immune to the virus, just like a genetic lottery. After class, Erica tries to bring PJ, Lucas, and Miles out for some after-school fun. Lucas excuses that he cannot go because of his basketball practice, while PJ and Miles need to study. Meanwhile, the Chancellor and Student Council committee members, Bully Boy and Bully Girl, approach the activist student group, demanding that tuition fees be rolled back. The Chancellor suggests they bring up their issue with the Student Council, but the student activist leader flatly refuses. Consequently, Bully Boy intervenes, assuring the protesting students that he will personally represent their viewpoint to the Chancellor. But Bully Boy's words of support don't sway them, because they know he does not carry out the duties of a student council officer. On the other hand, Mario calls his friend while driving. He favors borrowing some money to pay Peggy's tuition, since he is currently unemployed after completing his contract overseas. But Mario's friend could not lend it because he had already used the money to pay for his medical expenses. While conversing on the phone, Mario fails to notice a youngster deliberately running in front of his moving automobile. The whole thing is a con to stealing money, but Mario is wise to his tricks. Instead of paying the youngster for the incident, Mario brings him to San Lazaro's hospital. It's training time, and PG and Erica begin their duty at San Lazaro's hospital. A mother who seems to have a human bite on her leg has been assigned to their care. PG then checks the woman's respiration and instructs her to lie down to examine the superficial wound, at which point the woman suffers a seizure and passes away. This prompts PG to save her while panicking, but the doctor immediately stops her. Apparently, the woman's death causes PG to remember her mother's passing. Afterward, PG comforts the woman's young daughter, who is grieving the loss of her mother. Meanwhile, Mario spots PJ and Erica and approaches them. He then informs his daughter that he accidentally ran over a kid in the street and needs to pay for his x-ray, making PJ even more stressed. Because of that, Erica interrupts them to excuse PG for a little walk outside. On the other hand, Miles and a fellow student head over to bring the woman's body to the morgue. However, they suddenly notice waves moving on the woman's electrocardiogram, showing that she is still alive. Eventually, the woman reanimates and bites the fellow's neck, causing Miles to flee. She begins attacking other people in the hospital, causing them to be infected, and reanimate as undead. Stunned, Mario quickly takes the youngster with him and flees together. The undead then begins slaughtering several students and personnel around the university, including Lucas's basketball team, wherein Lucas is the lone survivor. He manages to flee the horde of zombies and look for his friends, but he ends up meeting Mario and the youngster. Lucas then ensures they are not infected, but Mario says the youngster got bitten. Due to that, Lucas and Mario are forced to kill the youngster after witnessing his transformation. Afterward, they decide to separate to find PJ. Meanwhile, Miles runs away from the hospital and ends up in his professor's office, where he encounters PJ and Erica. Miles discovers they are also telling a theory about the woman's bizarre state. So Miles adds information to PJ and Erica's report about the infected woman returning to life and spreading the infection to others. Initially skeptical of Miles' claim, PG and Erica check their phones for confirmation. PG receives texts from Lucas, warning of the infection spread throughout the university, and Erica sees a video of a fellow student being bitten by the undead. 
A student running away from the zombie outside heightens PJ and Erica's fear. Luckily, the professor hastily closes the door before the zombie can attack them. PG and Erica then use a huge cabinet to block the door and call Miles for more support. As they hold the door, Erica asks Miles for an escape plan when suddenly they hear Lucas' voice outside and quickly open it. Following this, Lucas orders his companions evacuation, including his professor. But he eventually discovers that their professor got bitten by a zombie and turned into one. Because of that, the four plot to eliminate their professor and then flee the school. However, the military already starts a campus quarantine and is forced to shoot zombies and students escaping from the front gate. Meanwhile, Bully Boy contacts his general father for evacuation via helicopter on the hospital's helipad. Bully Boy's father agrees, but informs Bully Boy that it will arrive tomorrow at 5 a.m. and can only carry two people. So Bully Boy tells Bully Girl not to inform anyone about the rescue, as they are the only students chosen to be saved. Nevertheless, Bully Girl discreetly messages the student leaders to disseminate the information. Miles received Bully Girl's message. He then tells the rest that a rescue helicopter will come to the hospital roof at 5 a.m. Because of that, PJ quickly selects the routes they will take to get to the hospital, the church and library as a halfway stop, followed by the pool and the actual hospital. When Bully Boy discovers that Bully Girl has disobeyed him, he doesn't waste any time to remove Bully Girl from being rescued. But Bully Girl shows no care about it and chastises Bully Boy for being selfish despite having the resources to help everyone. Eventually, their discussion ends in a scuffle, and Bully Boy accidentally pushes Bully Girl off a staircase, ending her bullying life. While en route to the hospital, PJ and her pals stumble upon the scene. They race to the stairwell and discover that Bully Girl has fallen. In a state of panic, Bully Boy fabricates a cover story in which he justifies killing Bully Girl by saying that she was infected and he had to act in self-defense. Unfortunately, the group is convinced to believe Bully Boy's deception and accepts him into their group. After that, everybody packs up and heads outside. The group then continues to the church, only to find that the path is littered with zombies. Consequently, Lucas orders his group to sneak through the crowd of zombies one at a time. Miles and Erica go ahead, while Bully Boy comes in second. Luckily, the zombies are rendered blind by the red light, allowing the three to pass through safely. Paige and Lucas get separated from the three. Shortly as they make it through the zombies, the power suddenly returns, enabling the undead a chance to see them and chase them. PG and Lucas head to the parking lot. They hide under the vehicle and crawl to escape from the zombies. Once they see an area is a safe zone, they immediately get out when suddenly the Chancellor, who eventually turns into a zombie, attacks them. Both PG and Lucas sprinted to get through the fence. Just then, PG and Lucas reunite with the group outside the church. They try opening its door, but it is locked. This causes the group to freak out because the zombies begin to surround them. Forced to take action, the group fights against the zombies, only to learn that they are indestructible. The group then raises their weapons in anticipation of battle as more zombies are approaching. But Mario unexpectedly opens the church entrance and lets them inside. It seems that Mario and two others have managed to hide inside the chapel. Mario and the security guard use the firearms and shoot zombies in the head, killing them instantly. Afterward, they lock the door to keep the zombies out. Inside the church, the group starts talking. Miles tells them that the infected people are carrying a new virus. However, PJ disagrees, arguing that the disease may be an old adapted virus. PJ also claims that the rapid spread can be attributed to infected individuals, exhibiting rabies-like symptoms. Four hours before the rescue, PJ informs the group that they must move immediately. However, Bully Boy reveals that people must be left behind, as the helicopter can only fit two people. This causes the group to feel angry, and PJ convinces Bully Boy that he needs them to survive. Bully Boy hasn't agreed yet, but PJ already decides to stick them together until they reach the helipad. The group passes by the faculty afterward. However, the girl sees her zombified mother and rushes to her side, causing her to draw the zombies' attention. The zombies devour the girl and her smelly part in the process, forcing the others to leave when Bully Boy unexpectedly locks them out and walks to the faculty alone. The group temporarily rests in the dormitory, where they reminisce on their past as Mario plays the guitar. Because of that, PG and her father finally reconcile. PG then stands to find clothes in the closet when suddenly a zombie attacks her, so Mario promptly kills the zombie and saves PJ. However, Mario notices a bite on his right hand, indicating that the zombie has bitten him before it gets killed. Mario gives the order to kill him when he realizes he is going to turn, but the security guard opts to lock him in the dormitory's storage closet. In contrast, PJ disagrees with the group's decision and insists that she can still cure her father. Unfortunately, Mario has already decided and Lucas gets PJ away from him. Because of that, PJ has no choice but to bid goodbye to her father and leave the dormitory room without him. 
One hour before 5 a.m., the group continues en route to the hospital. While they are on their way, the group suddenly begins dwindling. Miles is the first to die, as he is attacked and mortally injured by a wandering zombie. Next is the security guard, who decides to stay behind and protect them from the zombies. Then there's Erica, who gives up her life and acts as bait, so PJ and Lucas can escape the shitty zombies. Apparently, they soon discover the zombies' weakness is water after jumping into the pool. PJ and Lucas did not waste any time leaving the pool area. They quickly run their wet butts away and head straight to the helipad. Once they reach the hospital roof, Lucas quickly lifts the heavy PG to the helipad because the zombies are poised to destroy the door and attack. Then suddenly, Lucas decides to use himself as bait and leap off the building in an attempt to lure the zombies away. Because of that, a distraught PJ suffers from the emotional strain of losing his family and friends, and then she passes out. After some time, the sun eventually rises, and PJ awakens with no helicopter in sight. She then gets astounded to find a bite mark on her hand, but she did not morph into a zombie. She learns that she is immune to the infection. As a result, she resolves to return to the dormitory halls and eliminate the zombie threat. PG reunites with her father later on. She then discovers that Mario is also immune to the virus. Shortly after reuniting, the two decide to explore an ancient tunnel underneath the church where the girl had previously discovered upon following a cat. Once there, they suddenly find Bully Boy, delusional from the virus and resentful because he believes his father has abandoned him. Mario tries to calm him, but Bully Boy starts to bite Mario and PJ to turn them into zombies. Luckily, Mario managed to knock Bully Boy down. Afterward, PG and Mario escape through a smelly manhole and leave Bully Boy to be devoured by an oncoming horde of zombies. The movie ends with PG and her father fleeing the university using the ancient tunnel. However, they soon realize that the infection has spread beyond university into an expansive city so they prepare to arm themselves for another battle. It's also revealed that the security guard survived after broadcasting her message, and a news report shares that a large typhoon will engulf the Philippines, which can weaken the zombies as they are vulnerable to water. Then two weeks after the storm, another survivor is revealed, wherein Lucas is found alive and badly injured by a group of raiders. It's then shown that the leader decides to take Lucas and be part of their group. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.